Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. We are back for the Monday Euro Market Watch. Uh, it's a bit weird because again, still in the room packing up, so hence the weird setting and the horrible lighting. So you'll have to accept my apologies on that one. We are going to today look primarily at the ban list changes. Last week I predicted as to whether Harpy's Feather Duster would come back or not. Uh, personally, I didn't think it would yet. But here we are, Harpy's Feather Duster is legal. And the question is, are people really going to play it? Well, that'll be interesting to see. So we're going to take a look at what some of the changes are since the ban list and see how they've affected prices across the market. Primarily, we are looking at those cards that have come off the list, but it'll be interesting to see if it's had any knock-on effects anywhere else. But that's enough waffling from me. These come out every single Monday, so if you are interested in watching more, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and we'll get stuck right into the market watch for you now. So before we get started, let me first apologize if there are any kind of weird noises in the background. I'm not the only person that lives in this house, and unfortunately everyone else that lives here is extremely loud most of the time. On top of that, we have some absolute bell-end dog that sits out the back barking uh, just about every motherfucker you can imagine. So, fully expect to hear some weird barking noises in the background at some point. But, with that out of the way, let's get stuck into what we're here for. So, uh, as we all know, we recently got this new list, in fact... At the time of recording and at the time of upload, you'll see that it's in effect from today. So, what I wanted to do is take a look through the cards that have came off, some of the effects that we'll have had, and some of the cards that got banned and see how they got on as well. So this episode is pretty much exclusively for that sort of thing, so we're going to be running through those for you just now. So we're starting off with one card that is kind of questionable that came off the list, Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. I don't think this is too bad, as long as they do hit VFD as well, which is long overdue, and yet here we are. That's clearly never going to fucking happen at this rate, but there you go. That's by the by. So, Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish getting a lot of hype at the moment. Uh, it's certainly enabling PK Fire to be a thing again. I've been playtesting that myself. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, lots of people are excited about this and the applications it has in many other decks too. Uh, all the typical stuff that you'd expect. Obviously, Phantom Knight variants. We're looking at August again. All that kind of good stuff. Uh, you can get these from €3.80 Euros 80 and above. Um... If you're looking on eBay, they're closer to sort of €5 Euros or so. These did spike right up to about €15 Euros just after the list dropped, uh, but they've kind of came back down and settled out. This card was printed to absolute death, but of course, there is still an increase in demand for it, and that's what we're seeing in the price here. So we're going to go ahead and take a look through all of the Harpies Feather Duster prints, just so you can get an idea of what these have gone up to. I called this few a week ago. I told you to get your copies just in case. Did you listen? Well, hopefully you did, and hopefully you've saved yourself some money. But if you didn't listen, well, tough titties for you. These are now kind of expensive. So, for Battle Pack versions, you're looking at a minimum of €17 Euros a pop. That is for Black Rare. These look absolutely awful. Uh, this is just like the, the reprint of the TP one, I believe. Um, so if this is what you're into, €17 Euros at a minimum, closer to 20 if you want something in near mint condition. Next one's a Stairway of the Destined Duel. These are a minimum of €20. Euros. Uh, actually, the majority after that, though, are... Whoa. If you want something near mint, you're looking closer to 30 uh, If we're to be entirely honest, there's one seller below that, but there's probably something going on there if it's a lot cheaper. But for something in just good condition, you're looking in well over the €20, Euro, closer to €25 Euro mark. And don't be surprised if we start to see these disappear at this lower end. Next, looking at the World Championship version, one that I kind of anticipated might be a bit higher than it is. Uh, for something in just good condition, though, the €22 Euros plus for something near mint, the lowest one is 26 and then you look in 30 and upwards. It doesn't really surprise me that this is holding a slightly better value, and I think it may go up over time because it's one of those old prints, and people do like their old print cards. Next, looking at the Star Foil Rare version of the Battle Pack 1 that we saw earlier. A minimum of €23 Euros for something in good condition. Who knew a Battle Pack card and a Star Foil card would be so goddamn expensive? Yet here we are. Star Foils for all, and you look at a minimum of €25 Euros and upwards, really, for something in near mint condition. Of course, we're taking into account postage there. Um, but yeah, it just depends what you're into. I guess if you want to flex on your opponent and piss them off in all the right ways. And when I say flex, I mean flex by tilting them then this is probably the one you want to go for. 
So the Joey's Wild version of this is looking at a minimum of 29 euros and upwards, something near mint your 30 plus, most of them settling around that 35 mark on the whole though, uh, again expect these to disappear at low end, that was that bell end dog I was telling you about, and here he goes off with his absolute ass hattery. So after Joey's World, we have Yugi's World. Similar sort of price, 30 euros and upwards, although they have almost disappeared around that mark and you're looking 40 plus. In fact, it may be slightly more expensive in the long run to pick this one up. If you want to get it now, it's probably a better time than ever before these disappear, uh, although by the time you see this video, they may well have done. Okay, so onto the real flex hours here, TP version. Minimum of 800 euros in just good condition. If you want something in near mint, you're looking well over a thousand euros, in fact, closer to 1200 and upwards. And there's only two around that mark, and then you're looking at 2000 euros plus. And then the biggest flex possible, the False Bound Kingdom promo. I have one card from these promos and it's worth less than five euros. Fuck you, Slate Warrior. Why couldn't I have this shit that's worth 6,000 euros at a minimum? Absolutely absurd. And I, I honestly, I don't see anyone paying this unless there's some sort of high-end collector. But even still, kind of crazy. 6,000 euros. Does anyone want to flex on their opponent into oblivion? This is probably the way to do it. We're taking a quick look at Double Iris Magician. This is one I've been calling for some time that I thought would come off the list. Unsurprisingly, it now has. Uh, not related to my comments, of course. But we're looking at two cents and above. You can get them anywhere. Under a euro is hardly surprising. Probably something that you could pretty much get thrown at you for free if you know people who have a lot of bulk kicking around. Say it with me now, the Lego Dragon Ruler is dead. The Lego Drago Ruler is dead. Lego? Lego Dragon Ruler is dead. I'm so happy. Fuck that card. Uh, I'm so glad that it's gone and we're seeing it tank the prices of Researcher. I've seen a few people out there holding out hope that this deck is still going to be insane. Uh, I think it will be okay at best. The problem it had is that it could play through all of the hand traps in the world because it could just search all the extenders it lost uh, to any kind of interruption, whereas now it doesn't have that ability anymore so sure it'll still go off but it's going to be a glass cannon which unfortunately just isn't enough to be a crazy top end deck in the game if you're going to play a combo deck now you pretty much need to look at dragon link or infernoble Next, we're looking at one of the kind of stranger hits on the list, I would say. Uh, weirdly, these are still holding a kind of good value, even though they've tanked. When you consider where they were at, though, it's kind of crazy. Uh, this was a really, really important card for many, many decks, in particular the kind of decks that I was using where we're using the Invoked Engine, and you kind of lose to every hand trap. Uh, now, it is worth noting that the majority of people have been using Impermanence and Gamma and that kind of thing, so... Whether you should be really playing this or not, who knows. But it was just an extra layer of protection. Kind of sad to see it go to one, but we are highly anticipating that we'll get cross out Designator soon enough, which will kind of offset this a little bit. It's also worth noting that it probably also helps sell packs of uh, Triple Tactics Talent. Um, and that's something that kind of people are expecting. So we are seeing the price come down quite significantly on these, but they are still not a bad earner at a minimum of €4 Euros plus. And just running through some of the other prints available now, you can go ahead and get this one uh, closer to the €3 Euro mark. For the flawed version, you're looking at €2 Euros and upwards. These were closer to 5 not so long ago. That actually shows how significantly these have been hit by going to 1. Kind of a card that people are uh, discarding, let's say, and it's just going to sit there in their bulk. And the last print to look at here is Dual Devastator, €2.50 and upwards. Uh, not too bad. If you're looking to pick these up, it might not be a bad idea to pick up a playset, because you can get a playset for the price you could get a single one for before. And then if it does come off the list, which we have seen before, then you'll be quids in. Now, this was my real moment of joy when I saw Seer and Graf go to two. I hadn't anticipated that this would happen. I felt like Seer was the more likely of them. I didn't see Graf going off any more than one anytime soon. And yet, Konami has blessed us with this. Do I think that this will be a top crazy contender? I don't really think so. Although, I'm sure there'll be one or two players out there that can pilot it to that kind of level. For the most part, though, we're seeing just a massive increase in consistency. And, of course, loads of enthusiasm about Burning Abyss, which always makes me happy uh, to see people playing the deck out there. And something that, no doubt, I'm going to be playtesting myself. Uh, further down the line you can get yourself a rare copy of seer from 25 cents and upwards if you want something near mint closer to that 50 cent mark although they are starting to disappear at this bottom end here and a lot of them are being listed closer to this four euro mark 
And if you don't mind the gold rare, which actually I happen to think that the Burden Abyss in gold are probably one of the few things that actually look really, really nice in gold rare. The minimum of three euros and 50 and upwards. I expect again these to disappear down this bottom end and it'll settle around that five euro mark, especially if people continue to experiment with the deck. Does anybody out there know what Chihuahua tastes like? Because this motherfucker is about to get put on the barbecue if he carries on with this bullshit. 54 cents and upwards for Graf uh, in gold rare. I actually think this is not too bad a price, although there is a much higher printing out there. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, again, not a bad pickup. And again, I think that they look really nice in gold as far as gold rares go. Uh, so not a bad pickup at all in my opinion. And now looking at the rares, 10 cents and upwards. Again, just absolutely buttons. Should be really, really easy to pick up. And finally, we're looking at the supers. These are from, uh, what, what pack are they from? Astral Pack. Uh, Astral Pack 8. Uh, we're seeing these again at this minimum of €3 Euros mark, although these are continuing to scoop upwards. I expect that these will settle around the €5 Euro mark as well, much like Seer does. Uh, highest print and available. Hardly surprising at all. And I just quickly wanted to see if that's had any effect on Skarm as a whole. Uh, the Astral Pack version of this is a minimum of €3, Euros, something near Mint 4. But most of the near Mint ones are closer to that €9 Euro mark. Again, I expect that these will start to disappear at the lower end and people will keep hold. And you'll start to see them creep up a little bit over time. One of the most important cards of the deck, of course, send this to the grave to search during the end phase. Next up, we're looking at totally awesome 16 euros and upwards. We've seen a massive spike there. Of course, people are excited because they can actually play this card. Questionable as to whether it should have been hit in the first place. And of course, we can start to see some hype starting to build a little bit again around those water decks that have been doing the rounds. And again, this just adds a little bit of something to them. So will we see it starting to see more significant play? Time will tell. And the original printing of this card, €17.50 Euros and, 50 and upwards, closer to 20 on the whole. Again, expect to start, these, start seeing these disappear at this kind of range and heading up towards that €20 Euro mark. Do I think it will come down in the long term? Of course, I do think it will. I really don't think the water deck is going to do an awful lot. I think in terms of hand looping, there's just better cards out there at the moment and better decks out there that do way more with hand advantage. See Infernoble Knight. And of course, we're starting to see Dragon Link do the same sort of thing. So, again, the question is, will this see as much play as we thought? Probably not. And again, I think that this will affect the prices long term. And next up, we're looking at Mercura the Destructor. Technically, it is legal now without the errata that is coming soon. I do think that they'll update the database to reflect this uh, in, in the coming days. But technically, you can play old school Mercura. Not that I really think it'll do much anyway. I think you have to play some really degenerate old shitty decks to make it any good anyway. Um, so yeah, don't really expect to see any play of this, and I think even after the errata, we won't expect to see any anyway. This is kind of cool just for people who like a bit of a nostalgia trip, but there are a minimum of four euros across the board. If you want something near mint, you're looking closer to six and seven. Um, not something I would recommend picking up personally, and of course, there's plenty of other prints out there that you can get. This just happens to be the best one that's currently available. Tour guide time. 120 euros at minimum for something in good condition. You want near mint? You're looking at 130 plus. Unsurprisingly, we're seeing a massive spike here. A lot of people have anticipated this might go to three. And if you want something a bit more affordable but still kind of nice, the secret rare prints are 25 to 30 euros, depending again on what condition you're looking for. For something near mint, with the exception of one or two stragglers, we're looking at 35 euros and upwards. And one of the cards that has come off the list, weirdly here, we're looking at Gust Kraken. Uh, lots of people, again, talking about how this loops hands and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I don't think this is really going to do anything personally, but I can see why people would be kind of worried about it. You can get one for one euro fifty, although it's a miscut, so probably not legal. That's why it hasn't disappeared yet. Um, but all of the others are 15 euros and upwards unsurprising again that we've seen this spike although there is another print so let's go ahead and see how that is getting on even the super rare prints are 14 euros and upwards quite honestly i think if you can look at this at this kind of oh this is the dual terminal version okay that makes sense i didn't realize it was dual terminal until now 14 euros and upwards kind of makes a lot more sense uh, as to why it's this kind of price range personally i really like the secrets but people do love their dts so don't be surprised if this does sit or even potentially go up from here and we're down to our last few cards here, Pantheism of the Monarchs being one of them. Uh, this really should have been off to three a long time ago. We now have full power Monarchs again. Not that I really think that they'll do anything, but of course, those kind of cult, cult fanatic 
Monarch players can rejoice because they've now got this at three. The deck is just way too slow, and this was an integral part of being able to play. 40 cents and upwards, you're going to be looking closer to a euro, I reckon, when this settles. But again, nothing too insane, and deservedly, it's off the list. And I wanted to take a look at Widow Anchor, of course, one of those cards that it's really, really strong, but it's in a deck that's kind of off the cuff. I think when you get your top-end pilots that can play this deck, they tend to do quite well with it. But for the average player, this deck is no longer really playable. So the prices have stayed down. Again, if we see any kind of success with this, expect these to creep up. And for the reprinted version, look at closer to three euros and fifty, maybe four euros and fifty, up to five at most. Again, you're probably just worth getting the original print in if you're going to pick up any of these. And our last card on the list, we've got two different printings to take a look at here. Smoke Grenade of the Thief has been steadily creeping up since Infernobles were more or less announced into the TCG. Uh, we're now seeing this settle at a minimum of fifteen euros, going up towards that twenty quite rapidly, actually. Uh, and again, expect this to only creep up. One that people kind of expected might get banned. We've probably got one more format with it before it gets taken. It's absolutely insane. If you haven't played against the deck, you are in for a rough ride if you don't know how to deal with this card. And our final printing we wanted to look at here, the Legacy of Darkness version. Again, a bit of a number of 14 euros. I don't know what word I was trying to say there. 18 euros and upwards for something near mint. Although most of the near mint are sat well towards that 25 euro mark. Again, a card that I expect to continue to creep upwards, especially as Infernobles gather steam over a little while. So that is all for the Monday Market Watch. Thank you very much, guys, for coming along. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content. If you did like it, you should definitely hit subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. This isn't the only kind of content that I do, though. I do all kinds of rubbish content that you'll uh, most certainly hate, but for some reason people still hit that button anyway. Uh, we do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, mostly I'm doing, as well, every Friday, Locals Vlogs. So if you want to get an idea of how me and my boys behave at Locals, which isn't really appropriate, but there you go, we do it anyway. You can check that out almost every single Friday, depending on how long locals run for, because the fucking government has no idea what they're doing. But let's not get into that story, shall we? So thank you very much for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.